your certificates that you have before you this morning were all printed by Charlie Powell. Charlie <laughs> is a great assistance, Mr. Mayor. I know she is indeed there to you, but she is to the funeral as well. And thank you very much. Um, I would point out that as Freeman, it's not what Lincoln can do for me, it's what can I do for Lincoln. The Freeman now are primarily um, a charitable organisation. We don't have any say in the runnings of the city, but we do do, or try to do, a lot for the city. That is our objective. I mean, this year we've subscribed to the tank memorial on the roundabout, we've subscribed to Bomber Command Memorial at the top of the hill, and we've also taken part in the reinstallation of the Eleanor Cross down at St. Catherine. And towards that end, we also support other charities. In November, we're running a concert at St. Catherine's, and I'm having a plug here. Uh, we want as many people with bums on seats is what brings the money in, and the funds from that are going to the Mayor's Charity, which is Lives, and the other half towards the garden for the Eleanor Cross and to the completion of that project. And I do hope that as many of you will be there as possible. But we do also have a social side, and on the Saturday of Armistice Day, we have the social mechanic, and I do hope that as many of you as can get and live in this area will be available to come. Um, with us today, we also have uh, Nick Johnson on my left here. He is Secretary of Freeman of England and Wales, which is our umbrella organisation. And I will ask you to say a few words to you, Nick. <coughs> Your Worship, Mr. President, Master, Officers, Freeman, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I've prepared a few short notes, but before I do, I have to tell you that I drove up from London this morning, and I had to stop on the M1, uh, on the A1, because there was a a clip a broadcast on the radio, short section about. Magna Carta, and realising that uh, you are one of uh, four cities where a copy of Magna Carta still exists, I thought it was worth stopping because I was laughing so much. I'm laughing so <coughs> much, <coming. laughs> And it was a clip about Tony Hancock, the comedian, who's no longer with us. And it uh, was a clip from his broadcast of the show which was called The Foreman of the Jury. And he's trying to convince the other jurors that the thief is innocent and they all know he's guilty. And Hancock actually stands there while they're all sitting down and he says, Does Magna Carta mean nothing to you? Did she die in vain? <laughs> A brave Hungarian peasant girl who forced King John to sign the pledge at Runnymede and closed the pubs at half past ten. For all this to be forgotten. <laughs> I thought, that's got to be fitting, bearing in mind that in the back room here is the Freeman Baron as well. So I just thought I'd share that with you. It is evident from all your happy, smiling faces that you're all very pleased to be here today. Becoming a Freeman of a town, a borough, or a city is certainly a proud moment in one's life. Knowing that you have ancestors who probably lived here and worked here, helping to make Lincoln the city that you know and love today is something that each and every one of you can feel justifiably proud and honoured. You share such feelings with freemen and free burgesses from over 40 other towns and cities and boroughs around England and Wales. And it was due to such feelings of pride in being a freeman that 50 years ago a man named Harry Ward, founded in 1966, the Association of 
the freemen of England and Wales. Because he saw with remarkable intuition that the constant slandering of many of these two countries' finest traditions might also include that of the freedom. It was due to this foresight that ensured the creation of a cohesive body of freemen covering both England and Wales, which could not only be a national lobby and mouthpiece for the freedom, but also a means of advising and leading freemen's guilds on matters concerning common law, the law of custom, and the statutes of this realm. Only five years needed to pass before Harry's prophetic concept was put into action in his involvement with the Local Government Act of 1972. On studying the bill when it was first published in 1971, he saw at once the death of the freedom. Acting on his own initiative, but aided by those guilds, including Lincoln, and members who had already rallied to his side, parliamentary and legal assistance was sought and given. And following many visits, and lengthy talks with relevant government departments, the reaffirmation of the ancient privilege and custom of the freedom was included in Clause 248 of the Local Government Act of 1972. Today there is no doubt that without Harry Ward's initiative and foresight in creating our association, and without his drive and determination, that clause would never have been included in the Act. And had that happened, we today would no longer be freemen. One of those FEW member guilds is yourselves, the City of Lincoln Freemen's Guild. And it is thanks to historic responsibilities that your guild and the City Council, led by your Mayor, continue observing important traditions alongside your guild president, your master and his officers. As you've heard, my name is Nick Johnson and I am the FEW Warden for South East England and London. And I am also the Acting Warden for Eastern England and Anglia. Since September the 12th, I have been elected as Secretary of the Association and I stand before you today in the robes of an officer of the Association that was founded by Harry Ward. You might also want to know that all FEW officers and wardens are unpaid volunteers. Part of my role in my capacity as your warden is to liaise and help your guild officers build and organize so that you, as freemen, become to regard your freedom as a highly valued and esteemed privilege and to be worthy citizens of Lincoln, loyal to the monarchy, and your country, and managing as best as you can to live your life with dignity, self-respect, good humour, kindness, and charity towards those who are deserving within this city and your own communities. You, New Freedom, start out today at an exciting time in the modern history of the Freeman of Lincoln. With the Lincoln Barons having made their appearance around the city centre earlier in the year, which proved to be a very successful tourist attraction. Even the Freeman Baron figure of John de Lacey was part of the 800th celebration of Magna Carta, and the figure was auctioned on October the 1st along with the other Barons, as you may know, raising a total of £167,000 for the Trussell Trust. In addition, next September, will be the 70th anniversary of the death of Sir William Tripp, who was one of three people who were involved in the development of the tank here in Lincoln. And where would modern computing science be today if not for George Boole and his laws of thought and the logic of algebra, from which later mathematicians have built Boolean logic? He was born right here in Lincoln. Then there is the Lincoln Sausage Festival later this month that celebrates all things sausage. <coughs> Whilst during the same week is the Frequency Festival of Digital Culture, which plans to celebrate Magna Carta by transforming your iconic venues 
and medieval buildings with digital light displays. And waiting for the right future moment in their ground in Ashley Avenue is arguably the finest football team in England. When the Whites will begin, it is said, a meteoric rise to the top of the Northern Premier League. So many things for you to be proud of in Lincoln. Those of you who are now new Freeman have just taken part in a moment in time that is steeped in historic tradition. And like everything else that is famous and notable about Lincoln, it will continue to be a moment of pride for you, for your family, for your guild, and for the wonderful city of Lincoln. Thank you.